anytime there's a new technology, it forces people to change their daily routine. People often don't like that kind of change, even if the change makes it more convenient for themselves. This is At Brookings, a weekly in-depth look at issues behind the news. This week, the next wave, using digital technology to further social and political innovation. Our lives are touched by exciting new innovations in digital technology almost every day, from the way we communicate, to the way we commute, to the way we live. Advancements in technology should be exploited to enhance U.S. social and political innovation, notes senior fellow Daryl West. He explains how and why as he takes a closer look. Daryl, you write that there is a hesitancy afoot that can slow the transformational powers of new technologies. Explain that for me. The hesitancy is that every time a new technology arrives on the surface that people have reservations about it. They worry about privacy, they worry about security. I mean, even in 1930, when the dial telephone was coming into being and the phone company wanted to install it in the U.S. Senate, there were older senators who said, oh no, we don't like this technology. Like, like we like the old system of being able to go through the operator as opposed to placing our own calls. We see exactly the same thing with many of our new uh, technologies. You know, younger people often embrace them. Older people sometimes are a little more hesitant. It takes uh, months uh, or years for uh, those uh, new technologies to diffuse throughout the population. You say that um, new technologies can enhance political innovations and social innovations. Explain those concepts for me. Technology can enhance political innovation by making government more efficient. In the digital world, we need a government that is smarter, faster, and more effective at getting things done. The private sector has been a very effective at embracing new technologies to improve worker productivity and get more efficient. The public sector needs to do exactly the same thing. So the administration has a variety of new initiatives that are attempting to bring the power of technology to the public sector. Well, what are the primary uh, keys or things that we need to, to do to ensure effective innovation? Right now, the average private company spends 2.5% of its total budget on technology innovation. Government agencies spend a lot less than that on technology, so it's one of the reasons why the government has not innovated to the same extent as the private sector and why the government needs to spend more on technology in order to get some of the advantages. We also need to have proper incentives uh, so that managers have incentives actually to do things differently. You know, it's easy for people just to go along and do the same thing over and over again, but they need to have incentives from the budget and otherwise that will encourage them to adopt new approaches that are going to save money and uh, make the government more efficient in the long run. We need to tie government agency budgets to various management metrics uh, so that good performance gets rewarded and bad performance gets penalized. If there's no reward for good behavior, agencies have very few incentives to actually innovate. So I think when you think about kind of that combination of resources, incentives, and consequences, those are really the keys to successful innovation. Well, as with any new innovation, there are risks. So what are some of the risks associated with new digital technologies? The big concern that the general public has about digital technology is privacy and security. They worry about hackers breaking into their system, somehow their confidential information getting compromised, whether it's banking information, healthcare information, education information, or credit card uh, information. You know, Willie Sutton used to say when asked, you know, why do you rob banks? He said, well, that's where the money is. Digital hackers break into computer systems because that's where the money is these days in the form of credit card information and other types of uh, information that has uh, value. Well, what are some of the trade-offs between privacy and security? There is a trade-off between privacy and security. We obviously need both, but you can devise systems that really are very good at maintaining the security of your uh, system, but it, they don't necessarily guarantee your personal privacy because, for example, law enforcement agents might have greater ability to 
access information than the typical citizen would like. So we have to be aware that the thing that makes technology innovation very difficult these days is we want a lot of different things. Some of these goals are in conflict. We can't have all of them. And so part of what members of Congress are having to do is to trade off equally desired types of objectives. Daryl, you write that technology rarely drives change in isolation. Explain that, please. The most successful innovation involves not just bringing technology to bear on the subject, but changing the organization and changing the culture. You really need new technology, new organizational structures, and a new culture to get the full benefits. Some people think that you can just parachute a new technology into an organization but not change anything else and still get the advantages. Most case studies demonstrate that that is not the case. So we really need to use new technology to reconfigure organizations in order to get the full benefits of that type of innovation. Well, the U.S. has long led the world in innovation and new technologies. So what do we need to do now to either maintain pace or stay ahead of the pack? The United States long has been a strong innovator in the technology area, but we have to recognize that there are other countries around the world that are doing equally well, if not better. You know, when you visit places like Taiwan or South Korea or Singapore, I mean, these countries have raced ahead of us. They have faster broadband. They're they have more sophisticated smartphones than we have. They have more applications online. So the United States needs to innovate in order to help our economy so that we can create jobs and maintain our international competitiveness. Otherwise, these other countries are just going to run way ahead of us. Stay up to date with the latest research, learn about Brookings events, and search our directory of experts, all from your mobile device. To download Brookings for your BlackBerry, Android, iPhone, or iPad, go to brookings.edu mobile.